Hello, good morning, everyone. I want to welcome you again to our uh, series of uh, live webinars about the opportunities and challenges of going digital in 2021. Today, I have a very special guest, uh, Aileen Corrigan from Digicel Group. Aileen is the Chief Digital Officer of uh, Digicel Group. Uh, I was an employee of Digicel in, in the past. Uh, this is an organization which I really love and admire. So thank you so much, Aileen, for being here for accepting uh, my invitation. Uh, usually the way I do is that I, I just do this very brief introduction and I will let you introduce yourself to our audience, uh, uh, briefly take a minute or so, and then we'll dive directly into the topic. Perfect. Go ahead, Aileen, tell, tell us a little bit about yourself. Excellent. Well, first of all, Mark, I want to say thank you so much for inviting uh, both myself and Digicel to come and, and speak with you and your audience today. Um, it's a great memory, uh, obviously, from yourself and myself worked together uh, quite a few years back. And it's uh, fantastic to be able to link back up with you after all these years and, and have a chat today. Um, as, as you mentioned, I'm uh, Aileen Corrigan. Uh, I'm um, been with Digicel for 12 years uh, in a number of different capacities and the one thing I like to to sort of put myself is I always like to do the startup type of things. I, I like the innovative areas and uh, I became the chief digital officer uh, 18 months ago and uh, it's been my honor to lead a really exciting transformational process that the company has gone through over the last uh, you know 18 months and and really making a change for Digicel for not only as us as a company but ultimately for our customers because um, we wouldn't be here if, if it wasn't for our customers. Yes of course you know uh, uh, myself coming from uh, more than 20 years of experience in the telecom industry I totally understand that our subscribers and customers are are the most cherished ones, right? Because without them, we don't exist. And we know that we are here to serve them and to serve the market. So Aileen, usually before I dive into the topic, I want to always thank our platinum sponsor, Agora Office Space. This is the space where we are broadcasting live every week from, they are giving us their studio and we have all the equipment from them. And also our strategic partner, the Chartered Institute of Marketing Management of Ontario. This is an organization which also I am a proud member of. I act as their chief strategy officer as well. So we believe in marketing and we want to make marketing a much better profession. So uh, having said this, uh, Aileen, I want to go back to you. And uh, just, you know, I've been so curious. The minute I heard Digicel claimed or positioned itself being the first digital operator. So tell me a little bit, what does it mean? What is a digital operator? Yeah, it's an excellent question. Um, and it's one that I get asked on a, on a regular basis, especially as a root, our roots are, are anchored in telco. Um, we're, we're a really interesting company. And I, I think, you know, in the grander scheme of things, we're, we're considered on the smaller side. We have 12 million customers. But what makes us uh, really different and, and, and dynamic is we're across 31 markets, um, Caribbean, Central America, and the Pacific. We've, we work across four major languages and hundreds of local dialects um, and right across the globe. So we don't work just only in one geographical area. We've got lots of different dynamics, different governments, different uh, uh, networks, different customers. Um, you know, the way we operate needs to be different in every country because every country is different and we need to make sure that we flex for what our customers want. When we launched uh, back in 2001, uh, we actually just celebrated our 20 uh, year anniversary just recently, two weeks ago on April 19th. Congratulations. Um, thank you, a major, major feat. And we really um, changed the, the markets that we operated in. Um, what do we mean by that? We liberalized most of the markets that we, we operate. We brought um, affordable phones, we brought innovation to the markets, and really we, we changed the way that the, we did business. Fast forward, we realized quickly that across the, the, our markets, but also across the world, telcos had this really interesting dynamic going. Um, you know, we had OTTs that were coming into our markets, Facebook, Twitter, you know, um, Viber, all these different type of services. And we suddenly went from being really meaningful in our customer's life 
to becoming more of a pipe and offering data. So there was a major shift from voice and data. And we realized uh, two years ago, 18 months ago, that, that we really needed to get back to our customers, really start being part of what our customers want and need. And also how do we move from being a pipe to really providing really rich experiences? And when we dive into it, we need to look at, well, what does that mean? Well, it moves from being really telco focused. Um, and as an industry, we've always been very good at talking about 2G, 3G, 5G, um, you know, a lot of tech messages, uh, you know, very, you know, for, for most customers, it, what does that mean? I just want to use my phone and I want to have really good service. So really flipping it on the head and becoming really service focused. Also, how do we really move from having a voice and data, uh, you know, and that was the conversation with the customers and prepay and postpay was as much dynamic that we had for a long time. And how do we really start embedding our, our products and services into what our customers are asking for? Mm -hmm. and, and so we went on this journey of figuring out how do we, as a, a, a telco, change and become a digital operator because our customers are digital, that's that their mobile phones and the devices that they're using are digital. And how do we start becoming not only having a typical 24 to 30 minute uh, relationship with a customer, because that's what a telco uh, operator uh, on average has with a customer, to really become embedded in every moment of a customer's life. Uh, so that comes to, there's actually 1,440 minutes in everybody's life uh, every day. And how do we start thinking about our customers and what they do and then start developing products around that versus inwardly thinking this is what a customer wants. And so we, we really started thinking about how do we fill that 1440 and how do we get our, our customers uh, to understand that we're in it with them. Um, you know, we're on a journey with them. We want to do more with them. We want to be part of their lives. And how do we really enrich that life for our customers? So the other piece that we realized is over the years, we made things very complex. And what we needed to do was really simplify. Um, now, as a telco, from our, our grassroots, trying to simplify is actually quite difficult. Um, and so this is where we as a business really started a journey about looking, taking the hard look at ourselves, looking at how we operate, looking at our systems um, and really shaking the tree to start um, decluttering, decomplexifying and sim simplifying everything so that we can offer a better service for a customer. So that's, that's where it came from, uh, was really about looking at what we were going through. How do we become more meaningful and really connecting with our customers in a different way? Wow, you know, this is really a paradigm shift, right? So that, uh, you know, we were talking about, uh, uh, we don't want to become what we call a dumb pipe, right? As a mobile operator or as a telecom operator. And then at some point, what can we do? What are the different ways? And I think you you found the way, and maybe you are still until today trying to, to find answers as well to some of the questions, because I am sure not everything is so smooth and so so easy to be, to be done and implemented, right? Uh, so one of the questions that comes to my mind, you know, I know, you know, I worked with Digicel. I've been in Jamaica. This is where you are right, right now. Actually, I just missed that place, to be honest. Um, now, Fabulous place. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, so definitely you had lots of challenges, right? Mm -hmm. And I want to, you know, this discussion is a little bit more to shed the light and to explain to our audience what kind of challenges you had so that you move an organization of uh, hundreds, if not thousands of employees, right? Yeah. And millions of subscribers, you needed to shift this mindset, not only from doing things or from implementing them, but also to lift them and to deliver them to the customer base. Yes. So tell me a little bit about these challenges, about how we can move a whole organization that is not like two people, right? And no. <laughs> really start thinking all together in that way. And I am sure that Digicel is great at doing this, right? So, I, But I want to hear from you, what were the real challenges and how you were able to overcome them? Absolutely. Um, you know, it, it, 
I think I, it's a really important thing to to point out that digital transformation. Uh, it's it's those those are words that are are extremely uh, prevalent today, especially with the pandemic. A huge amount of of organizations are looking at themselves, going, "My gosh." My, my business was in retail, that shut down, how do I go online, you know, and it's forced this conversation about how do, how do I change and how do I transform? Um, I think that the first thing is acknowledging it's going to be hard um, because any kind of change is going to be hard. If you think about your own behavior, um, you know, if you, if you're a coffee drinker or a smoker, just, you know, giving up those type of things, how challenging it is in your own personal life. Now, multiply that by 7,000 um, employees and, and our customers, et cetera. It's, you're, you're shifting a, a massive ship into a different direction. But like with any ship, the bigger it is, the longer it is to, to, to turn that boat. And, and when you look at it, actually, um, I, I came across this really interesting uh, stat from Accenture. They, they said that um, the digital is actually the reason why uh, over half of companies in the Fortune 500 disappeared since 2000. And, uh, 2000. and, and it's a really important statistic because it opened my eyes and, and those that I work with that unless we change and really face into what, what is ahead of us, you are going to be a dinosaur, you are going to be extended. And, and every business goes through their, their change. So I think the first challenge is opening people's eyes, right? It, it, it's, you have to make sure that people understand this is not a choice. We have to change because our business, our customers have changed. The way that we did business 20 years ago was, was innovative and, and what our customers needed then. But what we're doing now is in a completely different area and therefore we also have to change. And so I think the first piece was, was looking inside and saying, okay, acknowledge, acknowledging that we need to change. The second piece then is then really um, realizing that this is a whole company change. I've seen time and time again that when people go on to digital transformation projects, they, they set up a separate department, they, you know, they might have a chief digital officer, et cetera. And it's that one person's job to try and change everything. That's a that's a, a minnow swimming up a, a, a river, right? It's not about one person. It's the organization. So it has to be driven from the top down. And and we were very lucky from from our chairman Dennis O'Brien, our board, our senior management Oliver Coughlin, who 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 leads us a, across the the globe and and into the SMT. We all signed up to this, um, and we realized that it's not just me and my team. It's technology, it's customer care, it's commercial, it's marketing, it's, it's everything from how we design our products. And once you start peeling back the onion, you realize, wow, there's a lot of work to do to change this. And I think that's the, the second piece I'd say is once you've opened the eyes, then really pulling up what is it that we want to accomplish? And so what we set out to do was we, we set our values around three key things. One, our customer, and we needed to really put our customer back into the forefront of everything we do. We tended to talk about it, but you know, we, we, it's, it's proof in the pudding, you need to do it. Um, the second is making it simple. And so really looking at how we do processes, just because we did it 20 years ago, doesn't mean that the process is still valid today. And a lot of times when we asked staff, why are you doing this process? They go, I don't know, it's just the way we've always done it. If you don't know why you're doing it, throw it out. You know, rip it apart, try and redesign it. And the third piece is then how do you turn it from into digital? And that's everything from the way you do things digitally, how do, how do you interact with your customers digitally? How do we do things simply with digital. Um, when we started this process, actually, one of, one of the things that we, we did was, you know, obviously start having the conversation with our customer, our staff, our internal customers. And we said, look around you. We've got all these filing cabinets full of paper. But if we're going to be a digital operator, why aren't we putting that up into the cloud, right? And we used to also, we realized that you know, to sign off an expense form, for instance, you'd have to walk around with a piece of paper to, you know, 
certain people get it signed off, move that all online. So we actually started ourselves looking at what we do and changing our, our processes and the systems. And then we also then looked at our products and we said, okay, if we're doing this for our customers, what do our customers need? And that's where we spend a huge amount of time doing research, talking to our customers, finding out what they, mm -hmm. they, they do. As a telco um, in, in our, you know, we have actually a lot of data, right? But we weren't using it in a right way to really understand, hey, this is actually what our customers are doing in their day. How do we make it easier? How do we start building products? And so we then started developing both internally and also partnering with, um, with suppliers that would a a enable us to provide products for our customers that would be more meaningful and really give rich experiences. Wow, this is, this is really great, you know, because you're telling me something that not too many people are able to, uh, to do, which is mainly uh, bringing the, the strategy, because what you did was a real strategic move, right? And then saying that everybody should be involved and it's not only the decision makers behind closed doors who are going to do all this. And then ideally, uh, when you bring everybody on board, this is where the transformation works best because you, you don't have resistance anymore, right? Yeah. And this yeah. is where everybody understands that you're doing it for with a purpose. And then you get a much higher success rate. I wouldn't say faster because still, I think this is a painful process, but definitely in a much more efficient way. And the way you spoke about the processes and then how to rethink our own operations, this is really something that need, needs lots of courage, right? Because in a way you're saying, okay, what if something breaks in the middle, right? Okay, we cannot afford it. And, and still, you know, you kept, uh, how to say the the ship on uh, on track, uh, you had the horizon in front of you and you knew your direction and you just moved forward. So understanding the challenges, and now thank you for explaining how you were able to overcome these challenges. Um, and you spoke a lot about how internally you started so that in a way you have a proof of concept if you want that you can do it internally. Uh, what was the impact on your subscribers? How all this, um, reflected on your customer uh, in types of services, in their uh, engagement with you, in customer relationship management, in satisfaction, in yeah. maybe how to make their lives easier through technology. So I would love to hear a little bit from you about, about how the customer was impacted. Yeah, it's, um, it's a great question because um, one of the, th there was, as we were developing our products and looking at the way we did things, um, we realized there was some really critical pain points for our customers. Um, and it kept coming up in, in, in um, you know, customer feedback through our call centers, through, you know, brand surveys, et cetera, et cetera. In most of our markets, we're prepay. We're a prepay market. Um, and when customers are using their, uh, you know, their OTT services like Facebook and Twitter and Viber, et cetera, all these things, one of the things that really came apparent is, when you're using those services, their, their data that they would buy their plan for would obviously be depleted very quickly. Um, and especially when you're using video type of products where obviously it takes a lot of it, you know, of your data in order to stream that. And in a lot of markets, our customers didn't quite understand when we were talking about, you know, yes, I've got five gigabytes, but what does that mean, right? We're talking telco again gigabytes like you know and megabytes and all this kind of stuff what is a megabyte and and people started going hold on where's all my money going why is it being depleted you know that i'm not getting value for my money and and so one of the the, the key things that we we really looked at was how do we simplify and make it easier for our customers to 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 use our product so one of the key things that we did was when you subscribe to our products in our prime bundles we bundle a bunch of services now for customers to, to use with. So for instance, um, people can stay connected through our product called BIP. It's a messenger and video um, product. You can um, purchase your plans, uh, being able to top up, send credit, check your account balance, et cetera, with my Digicel account so that you can essentially have a store in your pocket. 
you can interact with music and especially in our markets, um, you know, Jamaica worldwide known for a hub of, of music, right? Yeah. And, and so how do we bring really relevant local content um, and we have, you know, that's where Digicel really strength is connecting with our communities is um, my Digicel, which is, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a fantastic product that we have hyper local content as well as international. Now you might say, well, yeah, but S Spotify, why, you know, why use D music over Spotify? Well, one, they don't, they don't have hyper local Two, you sign up typically for 30 days and you need a credit card. In our market, we have prepay. A lot of people don't have credit cards. And we, uh, we enable customers to actually consume as they do. So if you want to have music for one day or two days or five days or seven days, we can do that for you because that's how you want to use and consume music products. We also launched a, a podcast and radio um, in some of our markets like Papua New Guinea there's a huge amount of population that isn't connected. Uh, they don't have TV, they don't have radio. And so through our streaming products, we're actually able to, to provide radio to people that didn't have those services in, in previously. And then video content. Um, the, we have uh, a product called Sportsmax. We're the, the largest sports provider in, in the region. And it's, it's enabling all our customers to enjoy hyper-local sports like cricket and, and um, football down the road in Tivoli Gardens in Jamaica or in St. Lucia, where typically you wouldn't get that on ESPN. So, how, you know, again, bringing meaningful products. Same thing with Plego, which is our TV streaming product. Um, we do VOD as well as live. Mm -hmm. So we stream all the live local channels for all our markets. And then we keep people informed with our largest uh, news publisher uh, called Loop News. We're the, the largest digital uh, news provider in, in the Caribbean and the Pacific. Um, and then also for customers, we have a product called Billo, which is really about storing your memories. Um, and again, why, why use that versus a Google Drive? Well, Google Drive, if you think about it, it's always connected. And so what's happening is you're using your data to upload all your, your, your photos, right? So suddenly all your data is gone. Why is it different with Digicel? Well, because in our bundles, what we're offering our customers is all that content, all that uh, rich experience, and we attach telco data for each of those services. So customers can use, let's say, um, they can stream two hours every day with Sportsmax. They can uh, access um, Loop all day, every day, included in their bundle. They can um, access MDA for free to be able to check their balance and to, to, to service themselves. BIP, you can have video uh, up to 10 people, data connected. So you, don't, you can keep in touch with your family and not worry about your data being run down. So how have we really changed the, the game? One, moving it from gigabytes into these are the amount of hours, minutes, type of sessions so that people understand what's included, but also attaching dedicated data for these services so that they can enjoy them and not worry about, oh my gosh, I'm going to run out of data and I can't, I can't use my phone anymore. We'll never leave you high and dry and we'll always have you connected with, with the Digicel products. So that's, that's how we really shifted um, you know, how we, we interact with our customers. And it was all based on looking at what our customers were saying, looking at their pain points and then developing our products around that. Wow. You know, this is, uh, you know, I, I think what you were describing is that because you have a very special ecosystem, I think, in, in the different markets uh, where Digicel operates, but also Digicel operates in what we call high-end markets or high ARPU markets, a couple of them, but the majority is more like mid-ARPU mid to lower ARPU, especially like maybe in the Pacific and in some markets in, in, the, Cari in the Caribbean and in Central America. So what you were able to do is that because also most of your customers, we can call them like unbanked. And as you said, they don't have a credit card. They don't have a bank account. It's difficult for them to reach to these different services. And then you were able just to bring these services to them. Um, how, how to say, how challenging was it to be able to, in a way, connect all these pieces of the puzzle, right? Because I think at the beginning, probably you launched one product, second product, third product, and then you brought everything together because I think it's tough to, to say we're going to launch everything in one day. So how did the customers or subscribers... Um, 
uh, react to this because I know that Digicel has a very high, uh, how to say, brand awareness, affinity with their, with, with your subscribers. Uh, so how did they take it? And uh, is there, like, for example, I remember a long time ago when we were working in Haiti uh, and we were doing what at that time, what was called the ring back tone. And mm -hmm. we were doing exactly the same thing, like bringing local uh, artists to put their own tunes and tones into the system so that we have a better affinity with the market. And the reaction and the, was amazingly positive, right? Because everybody liked this touch. So going local, and this is now my next question, especially in this pandemic, right? Everybody is trying to support their own markets, their own businesses, their own subscribers, their own partners. Um, so how this going local really helped you as Digicel? Because I think you were among the first uh, organizations or operators who really understood the game of let's be very local. You have like 26 markets or 25 markets in the Caribbean, five or six markets in, in, in the Pacific. And so it's tough to handle, right? So tell me a little bit about this movement of going local and how really it, it yeah. brought your subscribers even closer to your brand. Yeah, very, very, really good question. The, um, the timing of when we were going um, as we were transforming also coincided with the pandemic. And, and at first when most markets uh, across the Caribbean, markets started shutting down uh, mid-March, um, and, and in, in most of our markets, obviously very severely, uh, in a lot of our markets, 24 seven, you know, lock it, lockdown. And it was really important for us as a brand to really make sure that we were supporting our, our customers locally. They were going through a tough time. You know, it was, it was shocking for everybody to have such a shift in, in, in their behavior with, with everything that was happening. And, and it was really an opportunity for us to help support people in a really difficult time. And, and for instance, um, you know, on, in multiple ways. So one of the things that we did do was, um, for instance, D Music, which is our, our uh, music uh, platform. We got local artists from all our markets to do live concerts every Saturday. Uh, we, and we still continue to do it all the way through the pandemic. We, we, we um, did them a little bit more frequently at the beginning, uh, just because the lockdowns and people were, at, you know, really tied to their homes. Um, and as, as the markets have uh, eased up, we've, we tend to do them once a month. But we do live concerts where we, we support our local mar uh, artists to actually perform for customers, keep them entertained, um, and keep them connected because that was one of the things that, you know, people were really, you know, shocked. They, you know, how do I keep, keep in contact? You know, I, I don't know what to do. And music really helps people to, to connect and relax and to enjoy. And so that was, that was certainly one of the things that we did at the beginning of the pandemic on how do we start really leveraging what we have so that our customers know that we're connected. The, the second thing that we did was really about using our, um, our connection into the communities to make sure people are connected. So um, we started doing door to door. There were a lot of people that um, couldn't leave their house and they needed top up, they needed um, phones, they needed SIM cards, they needed you know, help. So instead of um, you know, people having to go to retail, we changed that. People were able to either go through the My Digicel app or um, they were able to then ask for people to come and, and help them at their homes, obviously socially distanced, to, to enable them to keep connected. And if they had any problems, to help them. Um, and that was a really big, uh, big um, area that we focused on, um, the shift of, of having our staff really help our customers in a, in a time of need. Um, and I think the other the, the other piece is how do how did we shift to really help customers understand what's going on? Because in all our markets, we had you know market shifting, you know, going in lockdown, opening up. Um, there were certain times for vaccinations. Um, you know, people it was very hard to to um, to know what was going on. So we partnered with governments throughout all our markets to bring them the news. Um, you know what was happening, the time schedules. Um, making sure that people had that information available to them. And then also um, through Playgo, we were, we, um, because so many kids 
weren't able to go to school and what especially at the beginning of the plago or sorry the, the pandemic a lot of kids weren't able to get online right because they didn't have the necess necessary the the schools didn't have different you know ability to to teach kids because the teachers didn't have uh, laptops they didn't have the infrastructure at home wi-fi etc and so what we did uh, was we partnered with content um, from the government in, in through our markets and provided 24-7 uh, educational channels around the exams so that kids, especially the kids that were in challenging times like grade six where they needed to have the exit exams, they were able to still be able to access the content while they weren't able to get it in school. So we, we really thought about our customers, about what challenges they went and then how do we get them that information. And, and one other area was also when our, you know, different governments were announcing uh, different curfews, different protocols, always making sure that we were streaming it through our, our, our services. So people again had access to understand what was happening, making sure that they were always connected and, and knowing what to, what to do. So. The reaction from our customers has been amazing. Um, we've really gotten fantastic feedback that how valuable they feel the, these, these services are. Um, they also, from an NPS point of view, we've seen our scores gone, go up dramatically. Why? Because people are really feeling like we're listening um, and, and also acknowledging when we don't get it right, right? Like, you know, yeah. when you're in the digital world, things don't always go like planned because everything is, is moving in so many places. And so that's where we really change from a one-way communication, two-way, listening to our customers, looking at social media, hearing from our call centers, hearing from our app reviews, you know, all the different touch points to make real-time changes um, and, and listening to our customers, acknowledging if there's something wrong, we apologize and we also then you know obviously go back to them and say we fixed it when when things go go wrong because in the past we had sometimes challenges in in fixing it but we didn't communicate it so yeah. um you know it, it's it's really about that and we've seen that in in the results from our customers and and certainly happy happier customers and actually today i you know as i mentioned we have got three pillars um and today, worldwide, um, 7,000 of our, our employees are celebrating our customers. It's oh. customer day. Oh, wow. um, Hence the t-shirt, <laughs> right? Every day is customer yeah, day. Every day is customer day. <laughs> and, and it's about putting, making sure that we as, as staff understand that we're here because of our customers. And so throughout the day, um, all our staff are logging on and with our customer care agents, uh, replying to uh, Ruby, which is our uh, in um, in app chat with our customers taking calls, uh, our business customers phoning our customers and, and thanking them for their business and really giving, you know, we putting the customer back into really making sure that it's not just a, you know, a word on our wall, that it's our value. We actually le live it and breathe it and also making sure our customers feel that we really value the, yeah. you know, they're giving us business and, and especially in today's world we have to acknowledge you know business is hard and we thank everybody for for being part of it definitely definitely thank you Aileen for 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 just giving us all this wealth of information because I agree with you that uh, when we give back when or when we give a feedback and we get back to our customers this is what they really value because we tend to ask them too many questions or be very demanding from them and then sometimes we forget to get back to them and then say, okay, so why I am here? And then it's very important to make our customers realize that they are worthwhile, right? So that we are here for them and without them, we don't exist. And also what I, what I was able to, uh, to understand from you, and this is, I knew it before because probably I was, I was in the structure for a while, is that Digicel is all the time very, very proactive, right? And, and when it comes to subscribers and to support, you are so, so fast in making decisions that really it makes a difference, right? It really makes a difference when we give back in a timely manner, right? We didn't wait six years or seven months to get all the signatures and the approvals. And then like, it's obsolete. This support is not needed now anymore. And this is what Digicel does extremely well. Right. Uh, you, you know, 
I don't know how, how much I can emphasize on this, but I've seen it in action. I've seen it, for example, when the unfortunate event happened in Haiti uh, during the earthquake, right? I've seen it, how you supported during the hurricanes. Like it's, it's really amazing. It's, I think it's just a lifestyle. And I don't think that many organizations are able to be so agile in this kind of, of, of environments. And this is why I think you have a very high customer, customer engagement and customer, I would say, uh, happiness. I want to call that it is a happiness. It's not only uh, being satisfied and engaged. So uh, definitely this is a great story to tell and, and to hear about as well. Absolutely. And, and um, yeah, I think it really is part of our blood. Um, you know, in, in every market, you can feel how passionate our staff are about connecting with communities. And, and unfortunately in, in a lot of our regions, um, you know, when you've got hurricanes and earthquakes, et cetera, that are, that happen on a frequent basis to see the response. And, and more recently in St. Vincent, um, you know, our, our, yeah. our friends and family and our colleagues in, in St. Vincent have gone through a very difficult time over the last um, six weeks with the volcano erupting. And to see the staff um, react, you know, they're, they're, they've got their own families to, to look after, but really making sure that we get supplies out to, to use our, our, you know, our influence as, as one of the biggest employers to, to, to help bring, um, you know, medical supplies in to, to help uh, markets and keep people connected because when things happen, right away you want to pick up a phone and, and make sure your family is 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 okay and you know it's it makes anybody um in did you sell proud because you know we're, we're there for 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 our markets and and i think it's really it runs deep in 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 the organization from the top down and i think it makes us unique in that yes, way definitely definitely uh, aileen we have here a question from one of the participants uh, they are asking uh a question about uh, why not all carriers are providing end-to-end uh, -end services and content and uh, mobile money and uh, and all what you are doing and cloud services. And one of the questions are, um, is it a problem of that they don't have their own cloud services and they don't have their own data centers? I know that Digicel, you have your data center in Jamaica, right? I, I remember that it was being done and it was one of the probably best data centers in the region in the Caribbean I, right yeah uh, yes. so can you tell us a little bit about this how so why you are able to do this and other operators are not yet able to give this kind of full service to their subscribers good question um I think there's a there's a few different pieces in it um first is making sure that you have a solid foundation um we've we we worked hugely um, in, in getting the, the, the building blocks for this in, in place, because if you don't have a solid foundation, then, then everything that you build on top won't be sustainable. And one of that was really um, spending a huge amount of time on really developing an investment into our networks. And we went market by market, huge investment um, to make sure that we've got a solid network that would support the services. The second thing is we, we looked at what we did have and then what we didn't have. And we, we put a plan around that. And I think, especially when it gets to content and services, a lot of telcos and operators around the world don't see that as their business. Um, they see themselves still in that telco, we offer a technology. And, and I, I think it's that the piece that's missing is you need to bring that together because the technology only services what people want to actually access and, and that's where the content piece comes in. And we have spent over a period of years really looking at content and, and investing in this area. Um, and it's one of our key strengths. We've, we've, we've acquired businesses, we've built in house, we've, we develop our own so, and we buy our own, et cetera, to, to make sure that we've got a, a solid content um, offering. And then I think the, the last piece is, is also, and, and I'm gonna be a little bit, you know, a bit of guts to, to go and do this, right? Because, you know, it, it's a leap of faith. We don't, you know, while no matter what business does, when you make such a change in the organization, a lot of organizations are afraid of that change. And it really was 
a leap of faith to go, this is absolutely, there's, we can't turn back. This is what we're all signing up to and everybody signed up to it. And, we, and, um, and I think those three things of getting the building blocks in place, getting the content, understanding what our customers want, and then having the guts to bring it all together and just do something different um, because it, it, it's the only way for us to change the behavior that we had. So I think um, we've already seen or organizations, uh, for instance, Turkcell in, in Turkey, where um, they've made this leap of faith as well, and they've, they've gone into the digital space. I think there'll be more operators over a period of time because the, you know, more and more operators are realizing the power of content and what our customers need, and they need to connect that, that piece. And that's where I think you know, we need to keep one step ahead, uh, if not two and three steps ahead, yeah. um, to make sure that you know, we're developing what's, what's next in, and we don't keep it the same. Um, we need to be innovating every day. We need to be looking at stuff real time every day. Just because we got something out the door doesn't mean we can rest for the next few years and say, hey, tick, tick box. Um, I think that's ultimately the change we did between past where we'd get a new pr product out, a new pricing model. And it was like, okay, you know, we're good for a while. Um, whereas now it's, it's every day. It's, it's looking at, at what our customers are doing. What are they using? If it's not being used, what we can replace it with um, and, and changing that mindset to thinking about it, you know, hourly, weekly, daily, monthly, et cetera. Yeah, that's, you know, you, you mentioned the Turkcell and I believe Turkcell was also among the pioneers in the industry uh, to have the sleep of faith in data and in providing digital solutions. I remember very well when at, at the early ages of the edge and, uh, you know, the 2G edge and the early ages of 3G, they were really the first ones in, if I want to say in, uh, Central Asia, Europe, and may maybe Middle East, where they really jumped into this uh, 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 journey, right? And they, they really led it, I think, in a great way. The same way uh, Digicel was the leader in the, in the Caribbean and Central America, probably, and in, in the Pacific to do this in, in your own region. And uh, as you said, it needs lots of courage because, you know, probably building all this and putting the infrastructure definitely you're not going to see the return on investment in a year or two. Uh, it's more like a mid to long term um, a return on investment. And uh, with all the fluctuations which we have in the economic cycles and things that are going around the world, uh, definitely it needs lots of faith and courage. And, uh, and again, like um, trusting what you're doing, right? And this is what you're doing. Like, we trust it. And as you said, we are all in it together, right? Like we all agreed to, the, to this, to, to go on this journey. So there is no point of questioning it anymore. Right. Yeah. So we're Although just in, saying, in saying that, I just like to jump in because, yeah. you know, it's, it sounds like every, every day, everyone has the same opinions. There's a lot of fights. Um, <laughs> and, and that, that I have to call out as well. And I think that's good. We challenge each other. I mean, it, you know, there's colleagues and I that every day we, you know, we, we, no, that's not, we need to do it this way. And we, but we get into the room and we have that conversation and we have that fight and, and, you know, we come to, we come to a solution. And, and I think that's really healthy as well is, is to, to challenge each other on, you know, not just agreeing and going with yeah. it. You actually really need to challenge your strategy, you know, amongst your, you know, are we doing the right thing for, for the customer? Are we doing it for simple? Are we doing it for digital? You know, are we doing enough? And that's even, you know, you know, sometimes it's like, okay, yeah, we've made a step, but do we need to make a bigger step? Um, so it's, there's a lot of fun uh, fighting as well. Yeah, I, I don't know how fun it is, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we, we call it fun because, you know, it's... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you you have to bring I a sense of humor goes. to the office. <laughs> but yes, uh, as you said, and, and it's very, very important to... Um, from time to time to question what we're doing right and in a way tighten the bolts and and uh, and set uh, the direction again right just in case we need to adjust few things and uh, and if we see that it's working then just double down right and say okay then we are really moving forward so definitely this is a, a healthy i would call a strategic uh, management style to to high level and high impact uh, decision making process so Definitely, this is really working good for you. So now, 
we spoke and just Eileen, I am just uh, uh, managing the time. We've been talking already for 45 minutes, right? Uh, <laughs> and I know that we still have to cover lots of things. So I still have two topics I want to discuss with you before we, we end this, uh, this webinar. First, what's next? So, you know, we always ask ourselves like, okay, we did so much, we are here, we, we changed the, the rules of the games. We, sh we, were, we shook our competitors, uh, we embraced our, our customers, employees are happy. What's next? What's next in this digital era? What are the new opportunities? Um, good, good question. Um, and I think, there's, I think there's two areas that I'd really like to, to dive into. Um, the first is gaming. Um, and and, and um, we've always been in the space in, in gaming. Um, we've, we've got uh, uh, an area within Digicel that looks after um, a lot of gaming with our customers. Um, but when you look at what our customers are doing, gaming is always like number one content. Um, and, and so I'd really like to, to, to change gear shifts and, and really do something really exciting in, in the gaming space. Um, and I think, I think the way that gaming is going with you know, real time and, 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 and when you think about, we've got all these different markets across the world and, you know, connecting with someone in Tonga, if you're in, in St. Kitts or et cetera, I think we've got a great opportunity to, to do something special there. And I think the second piece um, is, is all around currency, you know, the, the um, you know, e-commerce and financial services. Um, one of, again, one of our challenges is the, the, the unbanked in our markets, as well as the regulators, uh, the banking systems are, 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 are quite stringent and are actually quite difficult in order to get e-commerce uh, going. And, and that's been an ongoing challenge for our customers. Um, and so we've, we've launched a number of financial services, a money transfer, Moncash in, in Haiti, Selly Money in, in Papua New Guinea, uh, My Cash in Jamaica. And I think there's a big piece of work here that I think we're, we're, we're really leading the way here, um, but we still have more work to do. And I think it's such a fast moving area that I, I think that's the, the game changer in, in, the, in, the coming, uh, in, the, in the coming year and where I think we're gonna be stepping more in than what we have in, in the past. So I think, um, and, there, and I mean, the great thing is there's always great ideas. Um, and one, one of the things that we've been working on also is innovation center to try and get more and more ideas because you know it, it, you don't need to be the, in the senior management of a company to, to, to come up with a great idea. It's, we've got 7,000 employees um, and we're connected with our communities. How do we also you know, in, incentivize and, and engage our, our youth and our, our um, young staff to come up with great ideas. I mean, you know, that's, that's they're, they, they're, they're connecting with customers every day. How can we leverage their experience in, into the products that we develop? So we're trying to really help to, to surface those ideas and really um, drive innovation. So that's the next big thing is how do we really keep it fresh and how do we keep um, our own staff engage and be part of the process rather than just being the, the end piece. We come up with the ideas and, and, and they're, they have to execute. And we certainly want to flip that model around. Wow. So I will keep my eyes open on the gaming topic. You know, this is something which uh, I love personally. Uh, yeah. I used to play lots of online games before getting married. After that, with kids, forget about it. <laughs> However, you, you can start playing the games with the kids. My exactly. Kids always... So maybe in a couple of years, uh, I will start. I will start playing with them. They are still much younger than this age, but but you never know. They grow up uh, very fast, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so, uh, Aileen, I just want to probably end this discussion with the. Uh, with one uh, more topic and we want to talk a little bit about the digital the digital foundation and also we want to pay a small tribute to Colm Delps uh, who who led uh, uh, digital for a very long time as a group CEO he was a great person and unfortunately we lost him uh, uh, a while ago so uh, yeah. why don't you tell us a little bit about digital foundation what are you doing and what you did ex um, specifically to honor uh, Colin Delves uh, in, the, in this period. 
absolutely and i'm and i'm very proud to 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 speak on this because colm um was a fantastic leader man and and really the the digicel foundation was was core to 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 his heart um, he became the group CEO in, in 2003 and 2004, and, and he led uh, from the front for 14 years. And, um, you know, he, was, he wasn't a man to shy away. He challenged the norm um, and always, always made sure that everybody was, uh, you know, on their toes. Uh, and so a lot of the energy came from, from the work he did. Um, the Digicel Foundation uh, was established in 2004. We, we have um, the foundation in Jamaica, in Haiti, um, in Papua New Guinea, in Trinidad. Um, and it, we also have uh, smaller versions of the foundation through all our markets. Um, you know, spe uh, special needs is, is very, very special to everybody at Digicel. Um, and, and we do a huge amount of work with the special needs. And also in the area of education. Um, education, as we, we believe, is, is fundamental for, for the youth in our markets to have access to, to education and, and to obviously learn and, and to succeed. And, um, you know, Colm really drove this uh, and made sure that people uh, thought of the foundation as much as the, the business, because you, you can't run organization and, and you know, offer services without giving back to our community. And so um, it, the foundation has built a number of schools uh, across the, the, the our footprint in, in, in our markets. Um, but in Jamaica, we, um, we, there's the Alpha Boys School, which is a um, music school. Um, Colin was a music fan. He was in his element uh, being in Jamaica and having access to, you know, uh, reggae and soca and ska, and etc. And he was, he was really one to, to, to love music. And, and so, um, there was a school that w was very close to him called the Alpha Boys School. And uh, as a tribute to Colum, we had built a um, new extension to the Alpha Boys School so that they've got a music room um, now, uh, which is you know top class uh, technology enhanced and uh, is a fantastic place to, for the youth to learn. Um, these are underprivileged kids that can come and learn music. Um, and that was dedicated to, to Colum. And um, two weeks ago, as we celebrated our 20th uh, year, of which Colum um, not only led for 14 years, but he was also on our board of directors until he passed, um, we, we actually changed the Digicel building name to the Delves building uh, as, as a tribute. So, you know, very much a uh, part of us, but he leaves a legacy and that's, that comes with, with the connection with their communities and giving back. And, you know, as a memory, we, we certainly keep him in our minds and make sure that we continuously live up to that of giving back to our communities and, and making sure that we have a duty to really uh, make sure that we help to educate our, 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 our youth and to, to make sure that we're um, continuously challenging ourselves to make sure that we're, we're connected with the way that we should be. Wow, this is fantastic, really. Like when I read about this news, uh, you know, I, I, I felt touched as well, right? Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's really great uh, to, to just remember the great people who, whom we met uh, on our way and who made a difference, right? Uh, not only to an organization, but also to us as, as, as persons, right? Uh, uh, we, I personally learned a lot from him when, when I was there and, uh, and I am sure every single person in Digicel know who he was and what he did for, for, for us. So it was really, really great uh, to see that uh, the foundation really found a way to, to pay the tribute to, to him. So with this, Aileen, I think uh, we are reaching the end of our uh, webinar. I want to really thank you for your time, for this amazing discussion, for the uh, openness in, in discussing and, and sharing the, the information with us. Uh, but just before we end, do you have any final words, like any anything that you can probably recommend to either um, a customer side or even to other operators uh, in a way, what they should do in order to, to, to thrive and to move forward and, um, and just in a way to see if they can become as successful as Digicel was able to be in, in your own markets? 
Yes, and 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 first of all, I would just like to say thank you so much for having me. It's it's been a it's been a fun hour, uh, and I and uh, I, you know it's something that's very close to my heart. Uh, you know, I get, I wake up every day, it, I I breathe it, I live it, yeah. um, and I'm happy to share those experiences uh, with you and and your your listeners and the audience today. Um, I think from from anybody going into this space, really thinking about the customer and looking at what they actually need and what they actually want um, and, and solving a problem that a, a customer has. Because, you know, when you, when you look at it, you see great ideas all the time, but it's not really solving a problem. Um, and, and then people wonder, you know, why didn't it work? I think really making sure that you've done your homework and making sure that you, um, you take a deep breath, believe in yourself, and then, and then take the guts to, to go after it because unless you do make the change and change fundamental, those blocks that we spoke about earlier, your transformation will be, you know, uh, let's say a meow instead of a roar. Um, <laughs> and I think, I think you need to, to, to really, you know, for a transformation, it, you need to take the, those hard decisions. So I encourage you to, to, to make those decisions, believe in yourself and, um, and then put the customer first. That's great. Thank you. Thank you for this piece of advice. And I, I totally agree with you. I am also coming from school where we say we need to be customer centric, put the customer first and then build the business around the customer rather the other way around. And I think this is what really brings success on the long term. Maybe on the short term, people might feel edgy that it's not really working. But on the long term, definitely it is a horse which I would always bet on. So uh, having said this, Alien, thank you so much for your time. I want to thank, thank our audience who joined us uh, live on Zoom or live on Facebook. I want to remind everyone that we still have two sessions for May uh, and then we're going to take the summer break and then hopefully we're going to come back in September with our live webinars. So please, if you want to participate in our future webinars, um, join our uh, Facebook page or our uh, uh, LinkedIn page and uh, visit our website and you will get all the information about our webinars. Uh, Alien, thank you so much. I want to wish thank you a you great me. day ahead. And uh, I am sure that maybe this is not the last time we speak live and definitely this is not the last time we're going to speak in private. So <laughs> I am sure I look going forward to, to it. Touch. Yes, definitely in a way or another. Thank you so much. Uh, I want to, to say... Uh, uh, a big thank you to the Digicel family as well. Uh, you know, I miss them. I miss everybody over there, uh, not only in Jamaica, but in the markets where I worked as well with Digicel in the past. And one day I hope that we will meet again. So thank you so much and have a great day. You too.